Hi everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget. <clears throat> Hello. And it's number 112 in Sounding the Shallows. It is. Mm -hmm. And we've lost the heat, haven't we? Yes, well, we, we have. have in this part of the country anyway. <laughs> I think we called our last episode hot, hot, hot. Well, I think this is sort of rainy, chilly, not the weather to go camping in. It was really odd today. I, I went to, I saw the um, one of our, our electric fires in the cupboard under the stairs. And I actually got it out because I, it was quite cold. But I think I've lost my my internal measurement of, of temperature has gone all wrong after these. So you uh, sort of said hello, wild old friend. Swings. Did you? I did, yeah. <laughs> but I I have enjoyed the rain. I know you love um, rain. You I like rain. Have... Rain has saved me sometimes yeah. from yeah. from despair in an yeah. odd sort of way. Well, we brought our children up to love rain, didn't we? Did, we we yeah. decided, you yeah. know, if you can't beat it, join it, really. So, it's one of, the, well. one of the few things I'm genuinely proud of <laughs> is what we taught <laughs> children about rain. In Australia, <clears throat> when we were <clears throat> excuse me, working there, sometimes the rain would suddenly... Uh, absolutely bucket down from the sky and the the boys would throw their tops off and just rush out into the rain yes they were young teenagers i want to they make were, the point yeah, much to the bewilderment of the um some one or two of the, the locals yeah, yeah. Uh, but no we we do that anyway mm. i think we're evening out and getting back and uh, yeah we are and yeah. maybe it's been i don't know i mean there's been some great high points in the in the news and 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 in sport in particular i mean we're very excited aren't we ridiculously excited that the women have got to the final of the euros but it's been we're just talking about soccer football for those who don't know what I we're talking am. about here in england we uh, football wise we haven't won a world cup for a very long time well, and this isn't one it's and the this euros. isn't one but it is a euro <laughs> cup and and it will be the first time that the the ladies have won it if, oh, they, yeah, if well, they do yeah and they play again on sunday they do um they do and that's the final yeah but i mean i think last week we mentioned in passing the other thing that's kind of been trundling along which in the uk is this tory uh leadership contest and i don't know what you thought adrian but i think this week it's made me think an awful lot about communication and and how much spin is involved and that this isn't a criticism of any one person it's just the fact that clearly there is a desire for the candidates to come over as telling the truth as being as having integrity but it's a whole group of people mm. on either side who are trying to create that for that person just before we go on, uh, again for those who don't know um we have the <laughs> The battle for the leader leadership of the Conservative Party, and we're now down to only two. Oh, I see what you mean. So yeah. the yeah. recent the recent yeah. um, contest or yeah. uh, debate was between the two remaining uh, candidates. Yeah. So I suppose as I was trying to say, and it didn't say it very well, really. I felt that what they wanted for both candidates was that they would come across as truthful. But when you have a whole committee of people trying to create that that person isn't true to themselves really they're not just being themselves are they they're being a representative of something that is decided would be effective mm. as truth mm. and it all gets a bit complicated really I, I i've been really disappointed because i had thought that this particular debate would would be mainly about integrity and truth and um people being able to be who they are mm. and i i don't sense that i don't feel that i think you're right i think i think the, the to try to make someone into something they aren't quite and to say it as though they are mm. believing it and that it's from the heart but they may be very dangerous you see i suppose what i'm saying is they might be they mm. might be those things but as soon as you get a lot of people telling you what to say how to say it how to look what to wear what not to wear what to talk about which school to talk about that you went to yeah. and pushing your <clears throat> points mm. and that becomes very difficult i think well, it's very difficult nowadays with the media of course because i remember it in a, a previous um conservative leadership contest there was one candidate who had who uh, again had come from very 
difficult background, but every single interview he ever did, mm. he began by talking about that. Mm. And after a bit, you thought you, I thought you've really got to move on from here mm. to something that means something else, because mm. there are people from all walks of life, of all varieties mm. and all qualities, and mm. I don't think that works either. Communication uh, is difficult, though, isn't it? Well, it's very seldom, actually, in one's life, or anyone's life, that you're asked to stand up and speak about yourself in glowing terms. And That's true. Uh, well, I don't know. Interviews are much more that way now. It used to be that it was nice to be a yeah, bit that modest. Has changed, and yeah, now you're yeah. supposed to project yourself, aren't yeah. you? Well, I, I still think if I was interviewing, I used to inter I'm interviewed anybody for years, but I, I think it's a very difficult thing to judge, judge how people are going to work, in mm. fact. Um, but I, I, I don't think, I mean, wouldn't it be odd, for instance, if in the church you had to decide who were going to be elders or something like that by people standing up the front and mm -hmm. talking about their qualities and the depth of their faith and all that sort of thing. And you'd know almost immediately, wouldn't you? you I know you would, uh, whether people were actually on the level or not or whether they were... Um, going over the top. Would you know? I Well, I think I would, but perhaps I wouldn't. I, I don't, don't know. know. I mean, I remember once in America, we went to the Big Hair, Big Chair conference, didn't we? Did, we? Indeed, Which was, yeah. uh, <laughs> that was the very rude way that journalists talked about this very big, important conference for yeah. some of the great televangelists. Yeah. And it is true, they did tend to sit on very big chairs and have mm. very, very big hair. Just to give you an idea of this ho <laughs> hotel, they had a mock-up of the Alamo within the hotel they did it was vast and i remember you saying to me you'd overheard uh, <laughs> one of my favorite someone overhears. say uh, who was it who died at the alamo and the other person said david bowie <laughs> <laughs> i think it's referring to a different bowie altogether <laughs> but it did make me, make me laugh yeah it really it was an example of great artificiality the whole yeah. thing and yet within it I know there will be some of those people who would have been trying to communicate the truth as they saw it. Mm. I, I find it quite fascinating, really. Um, I mean, sometimes things can be impenetrable, can't they? And, and the desire to bring the truth out of that mm. can take people in all sorts of different of directions. I suppose I am thinking of the Bible and I'm thinking of the fact that I don't know sometimes I get a bit put off even though a part of me knows I shouldn't by too much commentary mm. I love facts and I love the facts behind things but sometimes mm. when you're reading especially in the gospels and you're reading something and you're a little bit caught up in it mm. and then you find this great block of footnotes telling you yeah the absolute truth of every single word yeah. and the real truth sometimes gets lost that's right so so <laughs> so where the listeners might might be saying to each other what the what did he say right. you actually you yeah. feel they need you know just just look at the footnotes and then you'll understand the arabic the greek the oh, no. the interpretation or, the or the, context. there's some weird weird moment where someone will say well actually the Greek word here really means um, waterfowl flying backwards. I know. And um, you think, well, if it if it means waterfowl flying backwards, why doesn't it say waterfowl flying backwards? Yeah. I mean, is it that over the years gradually the truth of what is being said will emerge? I mean, you've you've got a, a version, a slightly different version, which you really enjoy. Um, and sometimes, I mean, you were saying to me earlier that sometimes you think the expanded versions are more useful in many ways well, than the i mean you need the, both don't you of course you do and you need the concordances and you need to investigate it but sometimes sometimes i think you end up feeling it belongs to somebody else hmm. that it belongs i mean as of course it did in medieval times it belonged to those who could read and even now there is a sense sometimes that the bible belongs to scholars to people who really understand it or hmm. done a very in-depth training mm. and yes I think it it can lose something I think it can and I was thinking well this is a bit random really but I, I 
I'll tell you what triggered this thought, Adrian. There's a friend of ours this week was talking, wasn't he, about when he first became a Christian and how the Bible that had seemed impenetrable suddenly was alive. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. and what that the, the thought that triggered, and it is a funny one, but is of when I was 17 uh, and at school in the sixth form, yes. and we were doing uh, a Shakespeare play, and we were actually doing The Merchant of Venice, which no schools do anymore because it's a bit suspect plot, really. Um, mm. But I was playing Portia, and I had suddenly found, looking at the lines, that they came alive to me, yeah. and that it wasn't Shakespeare that was boring and dull and, and something you studied. They were words to put in your mouth and, and roll around. Mm. Well, also, I mean, uh, w when you hear, for instance, Hamlet, and you hear a really fine actor saying those words, you suddenly think, I don't remember reading those That's right. words. That's because right. Because what he's saying is, is entering right into my consciousness and my understanding. And that... I think that happens sometimes with with preachers and people who speak about their own faith or about the Bible, perhaps, or life or whatever. But suddenly you think this person is truly speaking uh, from the heart. Yeah. But it can go both ways. And I was thinking today about when I was in a youth club in Tunbridge Wells when I was 16. And it was a Christian youth club. So everyone was kind of professing faith and... <laughs> singing stuff and and all that and, mm. and in a meeting one day there was a there was a traumatic moment when we were all expected to do something else and one of the boys who must have been the same age about 16 um said can i just say something and the chap leading it said i was always happy. yes of course <laughs> encouragingly and he said very rather haltingly he said i just want to say that I've always talked about what I believe and how it makes me feel and what Jesus means to me. And he had, he was very forthright about it. And he said, I, I've never believed any of it. He said, I've, I've so wanted to be part of this group here. Um, and that, that's what I've really wanted, mm. but I don't have anything in me. Mm. Um, that it that could truthfully say that I'm I'm doing this stuff that we talk about so much mm. and there was a a, a, um, a terrible silence really because as we all know now look looking back the people sitting there would have had a variety of responses to that mm. some would would have could have said well actually nor did I and some would have said um, well I, I'm fine I do really do believe it mm. And, and everything in between. But actually, what he said wasn't a bad testimony because he did tell the truth mm. and he used the words you use in normal life to mm. say it. Mm. And one of the things I think that he had not been able to do and lost and regretted was not being able to talk like a human being about concepts and experiences that were beyond, way beyond understanding. Well, especially when you're 16. Yeah. Um, and when you're 16, you, you want to make that leap, don't you? I think we've talked about this before in, in being one of the people who's totally in the middle of the group and therefore has the language that you need in that group. And all groups have their language, don't they? Um, you know, I'm quite sure if we went into a group of, um, I don't know, particular style of music, particular style of dance, particular, you know, yeah. bikers or whatever, they would have their language. Yeah, they all, would have, all groups have and, their And you would pick up... Subcultural um, language. Yeah. I mean, we only have to think <coughs> of all the cookery programmes mm. and all these extraordinary terms yeah, that are yeah, used yeah. that uh, get bandied about. Uh, I, I, I would still say, though, that, that within the, the spiritual world, there is a different dynamic somehow because... People are claiming su such huge, hugely important things sometimes that can, that can sometimes be easily collapsed when the words collapse. Um, I mean, I, I, I was looking back today over uh, talking about subcultural, la uh, sub, yeah, subcultural language, the, the things we've heard over the years. I mean, things like the early 
experience of someone saying after a meeting to a speaker, uh, may we fellowship in the petrol, um, which mm. obviously means, supposed to mean, can we help you with your petrol? Mm. Um, but that kind of language was part of what happened. The lady who said, I, who said to us um, over the last year, it's been a growing time. Mm. And we, we, we kind of moved on because we knew what she meant. And we said, so is that bad, was it? Yeah. And she said, oh, it was a, it's been a terrible year. Yeah. Uh, but it had to be turned into a growing time because part of the common belief is that, that all bad things will be transfigured or transformed. And it's very hard to suddenly, like the, the fellow in my youth group, to plonk your um, difficulties in mm. on top of somebody mm. like that. Mm. Very hard. <laughs> what other ones have you got? Um, well, I was thinking about the fact that uh, people are certainly in the, the, the more um, uh, uh, clappy churches talk about the fact that the Lord would have them do things. Look, why, how this has <laughs> yes. arisen, I really don't know. So the Lord would have me go to Norfolk. Well, I think um, it adds a bit of, of dignity to the process. I suppose it does. Really. Yeah, look, God wants me in Norfolk. Sounds a bit too blunt, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. Um, mm. And I was thinking about um, the word seek. Oh, yes. If you listen to <laughs> speaking from the front and, and, and in groups that uh, people seek things in the church. They don't look for anything. Mm. They, they seek them. Well, and I suppose that's from seek and you will find. I maybe. suppose it is, um, yeah. But, I uh, don't know. And, and more importantly, that, and we've mentioned this before, we talk about people coming for prayer ministry. And yeah. we know now that a lot of people just cannot handle the idea they've got to speak to God in front of other people. And sometimes people who, who are invited to come and talk, to chat, to mm just to be together in a group might end up praying um, but the words words like ministry and an expression like prayer ministry can be a, a brick wall for some, some yes people. all I, I and some of these things are a shorthand aren't they I suppose that's the slight difficulty with something like that it yeah yeah it's very difficult it's very difficult really I don't quite know how we how we get past it all except that to lose the excitement to to start worrying about how you're saying things how you're putting things together whether this will be effective and I don't mean just speakers I mean effective to the person next mm. to you when you're talking to them whether yeah. uh, to 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 get through that to something else it's not easy it's not easy to to just let it be as raw as it is for many many people I think it is difficult, but I think something for people to aim at is to talk about where they've got to and where they are mm. and not, not to, to uh, add on where they ought to be. Mm. Or And perhaps you talk about where you hope to be. Mm. But I mean, when people say, oh, I'm, uh, I mean, as we know someone who say, says, I, w I want to be part of the community, um, and, and I'm really enjoying that at the moment, and maybe it will bring something else. Mm. And that's fantastic. That's mm. a... That's um, authentic, isn't it? Mm. I was remembering the occasion in that radio interview where the man said to me, um, uh, he said, you're not one of them born-again Christians, are you? Ah. And I, sa I said, uh, well, what's the other sort then? And he <laughs> <laughs> I said, Then he said, I said, what you mean is, am I a, a, a bigoted, um, um, ignorant sort of bully of a man who wants to beat you into some mm. kind of conversion? conversion and he said well I suppose I do really and um, the phrase born again which is at the very center of everything that is taught by Jesus mm -hmm. um, has become devalued and a lot of other phrases mm. have because of the way in which mm. they use yeah I mean going back to you just saying the words taught by Jesus I, I think I started really by saying my fear is that sometimes we just don't see those words because we get hiccuped and we had an email you know by 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 the footnotes or mm. by a feeling we're not really going to get it we're not mm. really going to understand it and uh, 
a friend of ours um, who writes to us every now and then, she said something she'd never noticed before. And if you remember a while ago, we were talking about parties and bunting. And, mm. she, and I had never noticed this. And this is what I'm saying, that sometimes if we get a bit afraid of the Bible <coughs> and a feeling it's something you've got to do, it's work, mm. it's, it's, it's a, a duty, you miss things. Mm. And I had never noticed that God had a party with 74 human beings. Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel went up and saw God of Israel. Under his feet was something like a pavement made of lapis laz lazuli, lazuli is it? Yeah. as bright blue as the sky. But God did not raise his hand against these leaders of the Israelites. They saw God and they ate and drank. <laughs> well, I'd never seen that. And I think there are so many things, not just because I don't spend enough time reading the Bible, but I don't see mm -hmm. because... I'm not really seeking. seeking. <laughs> I'm not really looking. Yeah. I'm not yeah. really looking yeah. because it's something that is is not something that you just excitedly pick up. Mm. And uh, the atmosphere, I guess, that we're hunting for is is that bit in Job, isn't it, where uh, we've mentioned before, where Job is looking back at when he was all was all right and he was a really good representative of God, obviously. And as far as I can recall, I haven't got it in front of me, but it says, it says, my words fell on them like the spring rain. Mm. And mm. when I smiled at them, they could scarcely believe it. Mm. The disbelief that someone could be speaking in a way that brought a smile to you, that mm. handed a smile to you. Mm. And the idea of a very gentle rain that makes you feel refreshed and better, mm. more able to face things. And in order to do that, you really have got to have some truth happening mm. and some genuine, genuine care for people mm. so that your language is affected by that when you, mm. when you talk to them. But it's not easy. No one's saying it's easy. So Well, we'll see you next week. Yeah, we'll press on. And uh, I can't believe we're coming to number 113. <laughs> next week it's got to be some significance in that no we're not allowed to not to not allowed to have any significance in the christian world 13 although it will for some <laughs> anyway see you next week bye-bye